in the name of God who loves us and calls us to respond, amen. Well, grace and peace to you, beloved, and our risen, reigning, and returning Redeemer, Jesus. As I ponder this past year of ministry at St. Mark's, of what I know of your faith and the transition you've begun, I give thanks to God for the honor of serving with you. At this point, you'd be excused for thinking that there are, in fact, only a handful of priests in the Episcopal Church who just play a game of tag and rotate, (laughs) with Nikki and I swapping places as she went to St. Tim's, And of course, then I came on board briefly as your interim associate. Nancy tagged me out so she could become your associate rector. Now, actually, Lindy Bunch, who was a former associate here, is now in my ordaining diocese of Upper South Carolina, right? So there was some kind of trade there. (laughs) And then, of course, I tagged back in as your interim rector with the news of Matt's retirement. That is a lot of change in leadership in a short time for this church, not to even mention the election of a new bishop for the diocese in the first time in a couple of decades, by the way, featured in your diocesan delegation report that will be published at the annual meeting, just stay tuned. And of course, when we widen our view, we know that change is the consistent work of God's people throughout the stories of Scripture who long to connect and to follow their unchanging, God, their unchanging God. From the first moments of calling for Abram and for his family, the question of faith is how people will respond to the movement of God, both life-wide and soul-deep, as the great epic unfolds. St. Mark's recent history strikes me like the particularly unusual reigns of the southern kingdom of Israel, called Judah, during the divided era of Israel's history. Most of the kings were not so great, just as God had warned. But occasionally, not only would Judah have a good king— but we'd read that they would have one that would serve for a few decades. It is exceptionally rare in today's church for a priest to have a good and long tenure. And you have celebrated, as Suzanne referenced, and indeed given thanks for Matt's many blessings and time with you here at St. Mark's. Even as you mourn, even as you realize, like the best kings, the best rectors lead through the gifts of their people, trusting in God's faithfulness and not their own ability. Now, lest you think we are doomed to Judah's fate of oscillating between good and less good or downright evil in times kings or leaders— The church, in its wisdom, has helped us to see the value of a time or a season of transition without a rector or king, because after all, you are the body of Christ, all of you, and Christ is the head. Even if transition can sometimes feel very much like you are the body of a chicken running around with its head cut off. (laughs) For others of you, this time of transition might feel like a little bit later in Israel's history, the time of exile, where we find ourselves wondering with the psalmist, how will we sing the song of the Lord in a foreign land? And sure, we haven't changed the where or the what of most things here at St. Mark's since I joined you in August. But there is inevitably a change in how, and quite obviously, a change in who. And that can feel like foreign territory, or even exile. My hope and invitation for us at St. Mark's is to join the prophet Isaiah in today's reading, giving voice to how this moment of transition, whatever you're feeling, 
connects to the larger and better story of God's redemptive and loving grace in the midst of change. It isn't easy. Try saying to a people mourning and toiling in exile, have you not heard? Have you not known? And you'll find some sympathy for Isaiah and perhaps even for interim rectors. (laughs) Prophet though I am not. If we have ears to hear, beloved, what Isaiah has for us is this beautiful connection or perhaps if we're feeling in exile, this reconnection to the God who chooses us for the sake of his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And God hasn't left us alone. Your staff, whom Suzanne rehearsed for us, your wardens, by the way, including her, right, who we haven't clapped for, Your vestry, who helped to put today on with the second part of the meeting, your ministry leaders, we are not left alone. All of these and more are committed to you in this transition. And like you, they are so wonderfully gifted and faithful in their ministry. Soon with Anne and Peter at the helm, your search committee will form. And they will start listening for the new song that will emerge this year among us. The song of joy, the song of hope, the song of the saints of St. Mark's. And I know how much you love your music. And we'll start to sing that song so loud across the church that somewhere some priest will start to hear it. And that priest will be the one who will want to sing it with you in and beyond this transition. And so, beloved, my encouragement and my message for you this annual meeting Sunday is to give thanks to God that however we feel about anything right now or at any moment in this transition, we stand together with a cloud of witnesses who have responded faithfully to the change and transition of their own journeys with God and show us the way we can respond confidently in our own day. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. God does not faint or grow weary whose understanding is unsearchable. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and grow weary. The young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen.